Let's examine how we can move a column within a table using Power Query, but move that column based on a position request. Now this doesn't sound like a huge deal, but let's see how people would normally move a column in Power Query to identify what the issue is. Then we'll look at a better way to do this so that the query won't break if columns are removed or added later in the process. So if we go up to Table Design, we can see I have a table here named Sales Data. We'll go up to the Data tab and then bring this into Power Query using the From Table Range option. Now at its simplest, to move a column, we can just click and hold on a column name and then drag that column left or right. And wherever we place that vertical green bar, that's where the column will be moved. Now there are two issues with this. One is this is not a very large table. There are only eight columns. But what if you were in column 400 and wanted to move to column 33? Well, that could be an exhaustive amount of trying to drag and drop to get this from one position to another and do it very precisely. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that step. Another way we could move this purchaser column is by going up to the transform ribbon and then under move, we can move this one column to the left, one column to the right, move it all the way to the beginning of the table or all the way to the end of the table. But there really needs to be a fifth option here like two column dot dot dot. And then we could define a specific column position like move it to the fourth column. But unfortunately we don't have that option. By the way, you can also right click on the column headings and access those move features from here. Now, of course, it's not very difficult to just click and hold a column heading and drag it to a new position. The problem is in the M code, because what the M code does is it relists every single column heading, whether that column was moved or not. So we can see here that purchaser was moved to the third column position. This query will break if in a later evolutionary state, we were to lose one of these columns, like if the region column was not in this table any longer, the query would fail because region was statically declared. So let's see if there's a way that we can move a column to a specific position without expressly listing all of the other column headings. To do this, we're going to use four Power Query functions. Those will be table.columnNames, list.removeItems, list.insertRange, and table.reorderColumns. Now I realize it sounds insane to want to replace this single function, table.reorderColumns, and add three more functions to it, but this will provide you with a more robust query. So it's really worth the investment. Let's start by deleting that reorder column step. Now we're back with purchaser in the sixth column position, and I need to move it to the third column position. Let's go up and hit the FX button and add a new step. And what we want to do is to build a list of all of the existing column names. So we're going to use a table function called column names. The previous step's output, load table data, will be where we derive these names. So close parentheses, hit enter, and this produces a list. Let's rename this step to get column names. Now that we have this list, we can't exactly just move one item in the list to a new position. What we have to do is to remove the item from the list that we wish to move and then add it back in the correct position. So it's really going to be a two-step process. Remove the name and then reinsert it. So let's start by going up to FX. To remove the item from the list, we're going to use a list function called remove items. We're gonna remove items from the get column names list which is the output from the previous step, comma, and then it wants a list of the columns that we wish to remove. Even if you're only going to remove one item, you still need to provide it as a list. That list is actually capable of removing multiple items. All lists go in a set of curly braces, and then in double quotes, the name of the column or columns you wish to remove. In our case, purchaser. Close parentheses for the list out remove items. Before I hit enter, notice purchaser is in the sixth position. When I hit check, purchaser is now gone from the sixth position. Let's rename this step to remove purchaser column. To add that purchaser item back, we're going to go up and hit FX. And instead of a list.remove items, we're going to use a list.insert range function. So think of this as just doing the opposite. So we'll type in list insert range. We're going to take the list from the prior step and then for the index number position, we're going to tell it what position we wish to insert a column at. Now remember, Power Query always starts counting at zero. So if we want to insert this at the third position, we'll actually define two, zero, one, two. That would be the third position, comma. Then what do we want to put at this third position? Here we give it a list of values. Lists go in curly braces. And the only thing we have in our list is the purchaser column. Close parentheses. We now have purchaser in the third column position. Let's go over here and rename this step to insert purchaser at third position. 
Our final step is to reorder the original list from the load table data step based on the arrangement of this list, the insert purchaser at third position. So let's go up to FX. The function we're going to use is a table.reorder columns function. So table reorder columns. The table that we want to reorder is the original table from the first step called load table data. Comma, the column order will come from the list of the previous step, insert purchaser at third position. Close parentheses, and now we have our original table with purchaser in the third column position. So I've renamed that last step, reorder columns purchaser third. Let's go to the advanced editor and look at the M code. So we've replaced what took one step and turned it into four steps. But the only reason I have four steps is because I wanted you to understand what each element in this logic is responsible for. But we can combine all four of these steps into a single step and get back to that one step solution. So to do that, if I were to take the action of the first step in this little moving process and copy that and then roll that into the next step, I could then get rid of this first step in that process. I can do the same thing here. Let's take this instruction and place it inside this position of the next step. Then we can get rid of this. Then we can take everything at this step and place it here, thereby getting rid of this step. Let's hit done and see if it works. The output hasn't changed and we've reduced this down to a single step process. So here's the first version of our query I call static method, where everything is hard coded, but very fragile. Here's the dynamic method where we relocate the column by position and I'm doing each step separately. And finally, the dynamic method with all the steps rolled up into a single step. Here's a slightly different way of presenting that same code with some carriage returns for extra readability. If you've struggled with rearranging your columns and having your queries break when the underlying adjoining column names change, perhaps this is the solution for you. Let me know what you think of this. And if you know a better way of executing this, please put it down in the comments. I always appreciate when someone out there smarter than me can help me make my code better. Thank you for watching. And remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.